Okay, let's do this thing. I know I'm late, but I do want to get this review in of AEW, though, since it was a lot going on, especially in the first hour of the show. Well, I would say both hours, but I thought the first hour was better. Uh, but yes, a lot of stuff going into, um, I guess, leading the All Out coming up. And wow, I got to say, there's a lot of crazy shit happening on this show tonight. We kick it off with the AEW World Champion, the real world AEW World Champion, CM Punk. Uh, Punk coming out there. Fans chanted CM Punk, and, you know, it made him smile and everything. And, you know, um, you know, he does have to smile, the prettiest smile, but he does have the prettiest belt. And uh, talking about someone that wanted a rematch and everything. And he called out, hey, man, Paige, you want your rematch? Come get it. And um, they didn't know if Paige was in the building. Hangman didn't come out. Uh, Punk basically said, yeah, that's not cowboy shit. That's coward shit. So here, you know, here's a little, you know, advice. Um, you know, it's a public apology. You know, it needs to be allowed. It's disrespect and whatnot. So, um, talked about it's time to do some champ shit out here now, okay? And the champ is here. And, you know, it's John Moxley. You know, he's got a lot of fans. And, uh, he might be number one to them and everything. But he's not number one AEW because CM Punk is the true champion. Uh, Punk basically went on to say that Moxley is number two. The fans look surprised. He's the third best guy in his own group. And um, it's been a reoccurring theme in his career because, you know, talking about the Shield and stuff. Um, Punk basically went on to say, you know, you know, it doesn't make Moxley a bad guy, but he's willing to uh, test himself against Moxley and everything. He's going to do it again. And he talked about his buddy Eddie, uh, Eddie Kingston. He's the third best Eddie's ever been in the ring with and the second best Kingston he's ever been in a locker room with. So, damn, just I, what is his beef with Eddie Kingston? I swear that's gone on for the longest. And Punk just takes as many shots as he can at Eddie Kingston all the time. So, Punk was throwing out the lyrical bullets out there tonight. Um, <clears throat> you know, these people aren't... Um, you know, number one in anything he says. And, um, you know, fans chant CM Punk. And he says, oh, I've missed you guys. I've missed the fans. I haven't even defended this title yet. And I'm looking forward to testing himself against John Moxley at All Out. And listen, man, this won't be the first guy named John he's beaten in Chicago for a title. That John Cena money in the bank 2011. So Punk was just going at him. And Moxley comes out. And I got to say, Moxley got destroyed by Punk out here. Because Mox goes, oh, look, everybody. Uh, Punk's doing a pipe bomb, and I, I couldn't hear what Punk was saying, because Punk was talking over his music and stuff, and says, you know, there's gonna be a fantasy land, and whatnot, um, and whatnot, and, and everything, and, you know, you got right, you know, you talk a lot of stuff, you know, uh, you write checks that your mouth can't cash and everything, um, you know, this microphone don't mean shit, this title don't mean shit, none of this means shit, and so he beats Punk, even Punk says, uh, Oh, really? I've heard you say something, a fake or imaginary or something. And Punk, you know, um, told him, you know, um, his hard soul that, you know, he'll be the dollar and cents and whatnot. Um, Punk, um, turned on the Moxley, you know, um, say you done talking? Okay, because, uh, Mox says, the only reason why you came is coming because you ran out of money. And, and what? And Mox says, you lost your fighting spirit a while ago and whatnot. And, um, I don't think you're going to do shit. Uh, Punk basically said, you know, um, we got a pay-per-view match coming up. You know, I'd be afraid if you touch me, you know, I uh, I know you just bleed all over. Which, that was a great line he did put. Because Mox bleeds all the time. And I've complained. I'm sure many people have complained about that for weeks on end. Months on end at this point with John Moxley just bleeding like a faucet every week. So, I like that line. But Punk says, you know, um, you know, I just kind of went nose to nose and whatnot. And then, you know, they start brawling with each other. AEW security guards come out and staff and everything, breaking them up. Um, basically, you know, you see the Blackpool Combat Club, I think, out there trying to break it up also. So, yeah, everybody's just fighting on there. Great way to kick off the show. Punk destroyed Moxley out here. All Mox only said was shit, shit, shit. That's all he said. Punk was just throwing out the lyrical bullets. He did not care what Moxley did. He just played him off like he wasn't shit. I have to say, the, the shots he was taking at him from, from the Shield, talking about Eddie Kingston. Um, basically, like, yeah, you're just a fake world champion around here. Like, and, and you know, you know, me and my friend Steven talk about this. You know, Mox is supposed to be this killer, but Punk just destroyed him on the microphone out here, okay? Punk killed him on the microphone. All right? Like, Mox did not have any really good comeback. All he really kept saying was shit most of the time. Punk was just hitting him with lyrical bullets out there. Okay? So... Yeah, Punk, 
Punk killed him on the microphone out here, okay? He killed him on the microphone. Um, next thought, he went against, you know, he went to Powerhouse Hobbs, talking about how Starks, you know, showed his true colors, um, you know, when, you know, are okay with losing. You know, I was only hired to do one thing, is protect Q for the past two years now, holding that title, but you don't have a title anymore. So now I'm going to do to get this, you know, I don't only just break backs, but I break necks. And, you know, he got something for the factory also. Next was probably the best match of the entire night. Brian Danielson versus Daniel Garcia in a best of three falls match. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was out there as the guest timekeeper. Good to see him. Uh, Chris Jericho was out there on commentary. I enjoyed this match. I like this match. Um, I know Gar Garcia got the first fall with like a dragon sleeper um, and whatnot. Um, I think, I don't think uh, Danielson had woke up from it and everything. Uh, so I think they counted that. Um, Danielson even countering the pin and get the second fall, and the third fall, um, you know, trying to go for that, well, I, I like Garcia doing that, um, dragon sleeper, like, uh, you know, hammer lock, arm lock thing was pretty good, but Danielson got the third fall, though, with the label lock, um, wrenching him in there, and to the ref called the bell, like I said, this could have been on pay-per-view, this was a great match, this was a fantastic match, and I recommend everybody should go back and watch this match, this was brutal, this was hard hitting. It was very technical out there. Hell of a match. Like I said, you got Danielson out there. So, yeah, it's it's a great in general. And, and Garcia held up his own also. Uh, but this was a hell of a match. Um, Danielson had tried to shake um, Garcia's hand, almost like he wanted to join a Blackpool Combat Club. Um, Jericho uh, basically ended up attacking Danielson from behind. Garcia kind of stopped at the end and stopped Jericho from attacking him. And Jericho said, you better think about this. So, uh, could Garcia be turning face and joining um, the Blackpool Combat Club? I don't know. But we'll see. Uh, Swerve and Keith Lee were in the back. They're going to be facing private party this Friday on Rampage for the AEW Tag Titles. One thing they were right about was, like, y'all been here how long? Y'all still ain't won these? Got a point. Say about private party and Santana and Ortiz. Um... <clears throat> Next thing you know, Tony Nese and Mark Sterling were coming to the ring for some reason. Moxley just killed these guys. Says, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get this shit over. We're gonna do this now. CM Punk came out back out then, you know, with the security guards and you know Pat Buckingham and the Blackpool Combat Club, and everybody just did. Once again, it's another fight going into the second hour, and they end up all having to break that up then. Um, so that happened. Jericho and crew were in the back. Um. Want to talk to Daniel Garcia next week to see whose side he's going to be on. Could he turn face? I don't know. Ricky Steamboat showed up there and said, you know, he likes what Danielson and um, Garcia did. And he would like, right have Danielson mentioned him in Jericho. And um, Jericho said, I haven't liked you in the last 15 years. Wants to stay out of my business. Jericho walked off. Um, whatever I was going to try to do something to um, Steamboat. But uh, the dragon ended up striking him down. So, yeah, the dragon still has it. You know, hey, man, we haven't seen Chris Jericho versus Ricky Steamboat since WrestleMania 25 and um, Backlash. I almost forgot about the match of Backlash back back in uh, 2009. Go look that up, folks. Uh, but, yeah, Chris Jericho has faced Ricky the Dragon Steamboat before. Uh, the Gun Club went against the Varsity Blondes. Gun Club won in, like, seconds. Billy just basically said, you know, I've been hard on you guys and stuff, but he's proud of him. By the way, both of the Gun Club, uh, they continue to come out dressed as Shawn Michaels, by the way. We've seen this all the time. Stokely walks out then, and then they end up, you know, the gun club, they end up turning on their dad, Billy. Um, they start attacking Billy Gunn. The Acclaim come out then, and um, basically, um, they made the save, and Bowen said, the scissor be daddy and whatnot. So, um, yeah, they end up all, I guess, you know, yeah, they turn the gun club all heel on their dad all of a sudden, and now the Acclaim is with Billy Gunn, so... Welcome to the new, new, new age outlaws, folks. The new, new age outlaws. And, yeah, the gun club, they like Sean better. I guess they like him better in DX more than their own dad in DX. So, um, yeah, that tells you something. FTR and, um, FTR. But Jay Lethal and him were in the back, basically. Um, I guess they challenged the Warlow and FTR all out in a six-man tag. Uh, and Sanjay Dunt will be back in the ring. You know, I know it's been going back and forth about this, um, you know, rumors and stuff. Um, I think I've spoke about this before, about the Bucks um, not wanting to take the L to FTR. They could have did the whole all the gold on the line thing. I do still believe there's some truth to that, but, you know, my friend also pointed out that Tony Khan 
say we're bringing those six-man tag belts once Kenny Omega is healed, which we'll get to that later on. But, um, you know, I still think they should have done all the gold on the line thing. I still think it was out of nowhere that the Bucks dropped the tag team titles and stuff. I still do believe in a way they didn't want to take the L to FTR. Um, I can't believe that in some sort of fashion. I've seen a lot of people talk about it, and I feel like it's kind of showed more and more when you think about it, because I'd rather see that match at the pay-per-view than this whole six-man tag title thing, or why FTR and, um, you know, Lethal even in this six-man, um, FTR and Warlow, you know, they're the champions, but they don't got nobody to defend them against it all out, so they're gonna do that. The Death Triangle's in the back corner, I will all spray, and, um, Aussie Open, United Empire, since, you know, I guess next week they're gonna be on there. Honestly, does Osprey even need to be in the tournament? Like, come on, isn't he facing Okada later on tonight in the finals of the G1? So, Will Osprey may be winning the G1 tonight, folks. You don't believe me? Go watch some New Japan. You'll see what I'm talking about. So, shit, he's probably about to main event Wrestle Kingdom by January. So, I think Will Osprey is. Uh, I don't think he needs to be in this tournament, and um, you know, it'll be nice to see him on TV. Uh, but you know, I'd rather rather see him. You know, Will Osprey. Win the G1 tonight, so we'll see where that goes. Jung Homeboy came out, <laughs> excuse me, cut this very bad promo challenging um, Christian Cage at uh, All Out and tried to, I guess he's gonna call him a pussy. Thank God Christian Cage came out because that promo was horrible. And he said no, and um, basically you got Luchasaurus suspended and everything, and um, you know, I fixed your problems, and the fans are saying bullshit and everything. And, you know, you know, Jack, you need you to come back home and everything and stuff. And, um, you know, Jack Riley was going to hug him, but end up attacking Cage. They end up brawling with each other in the end. And security was back. Like I said, a lot of security been having a lot of running to do tonight. They've been having to break up a lot of stuff. Security and agents been running their ass off. Um, next. Uh, what, 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 what else is going on? Tony Storm went against Kylan King. I haven't seen Kylan King in a while. Pretty good match, I bet. <coughs> so I would say it was the purpose of this, but um, what a bad match out there. Tony Storm got the win. Um, for some reason, the AEW World title will be on the line. I'm assuming this is an angle next week. Because why put the world title on the fucking line and not on the pay-per-view, which that's supposed to be the biggest thing in Chicago coming up, so... I think it may be some screwy stuff going on next week. So I would say Tony needs to put the coat down to what I've been hearing all night. But, um, yeah, you're going to put the world title on the line next week. Are you trying to swerve everybody? I don't know. I don't think it's actually going to happen. It's some angle, but strange at the same time. Next, Los Ingo Bernables. Uh, I got to say, LIJ's been having a bad 24 hours right now. Or just Los Ingo Bernables or La Faction Ingo Bernables. Los Ingo Bernables, Andrade, Russian Dragon Lee. Versus the Young Bucks and a mystery partner, which ended up being Kenny Omega. And um, Don Callis was out there. I don't care about Michael Naka 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 get off my TV. Um, but Don Callis was back. Kenny Omega, who kept a black shirt on, I think a shoulder brace on. So, you know, some people want to shoot my, um, Kenny Omega and be wrestling with the, some type of, like, you want know the shirt on? It's like, it's like a brace or something. Because I was kind of wondering why he had that on. Of course, you was going to see, like, a spot fest and everything, but they still did tell a story out there with, um, I guess, Kenny trying to do his moves, but, um, and, and stuff, but he did kind of, was struggling to hurt. Some people wonder, did he come back too early? Is he still hurt? Um, like, think, let's think about that for a second. Um, like, is he, uh, is he okay? He didn't end up getting a win with the one wing Angel. On um on a dragon leaf for the win, um yeah, like I said, you you can take this match how you want you want to go. Like I said, a lot of spots or a lot of match, a lot of stuff that was somewhat off time. I mean, even them jumping into the crowd almost looked like they um had to delay some of those spots right there. But Omega got the win. The elite moves on, and then for some reason, um, what Andrade ended up taking off, taking out um. Dragon Lee, I think when the Hammerlock DDT and his mask came off. So, yeah, so they just turned on Dragon Lee like that for no reason. And we don't even know why. And the show's out of time or already at, like, going off the air. So, I don't know what's going on with that. Honestly, the best thing on the show was the Moxie and um, Punk promo and Danielson versus Garcia. 
in that two out of three falls match. That was literally the best thing on here, and Kenny Omega making his big return. So other than that, that's all I got to say about AEW. I need to drink some T5 I'm out of here. So yeah, see you guys then. Comment, subscribe, find me on Twitter, Hood Night 890. I'm out. Peace.